Hey math students, how you doing? Today we're talking about uh, rational functions. Okay, so let me pull up my uh, my uh, workbook here. Uh, so rational functions. Now you may be thinking, oh, thank God, finally a rational function, a function that makes rational sense. No, that I mean, yes, it makes sense. But no, that's not what we call it a rational function. We call it a rational function because it is a ratio. Okay, it's a ratio. It's just it's a fancy word for fraction. All right, and it's a ratio of two polynomial functions. So f of x, if it's a rational function, is going to be p of x divided by q of x, where p and q are both polynomials. So now you might be thinking, oh my God, well there's there's all sorts of polynomials. There's like first degree polynomials, second degree polynomials also known as linear functions and quadratic functions. Uh, but then there's also, you know, 10th degree, 20th degree. This could get really complicated. You're right. It could get really complicated. We're not going to get complicated in this video, okay? We're going to have both of these p of x and q of x just be linear functions. So it's going to be something like um, ax plus b divided by cx. Oops, I said cx and I wrote cd. All right. Uh, C X plus D. I was thinking ahead. So that's the kind of function we're going to be talking about. Okay. So uh, now um, to get started, we probably ought to look at the parent function of this kind of function, which is the function uh, uh, Y equals one over X. Okay. Um, and I'll explain to you why that's the parent function in a few minutes. But first, let's just look at that function. Uh, let's let's see what the graph looks like. I'm gonna graph uh, graph a couple of axes here. And uh, the graph of y equals one over x. Well, it's gonna go through the point one one. That makes sense because one over one is one. And when x is 2, y is going to equal 1 half, that's 1 over 2. And when x is 3, y is going to equal 1 third, that's 1 over 3. When x is 4, y is going to equal 1 fourth. And you can see what's happening. It's just going to get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis here. All right? Now, when is it actually going to touch the x-axis? Never. Okay? It'll get really, really close but it's never actually going to touch the x-axis. If it could get all the way out to infinity, then we would say it touches the x-axis, but that's not possible, okay? Infinity is a concept, it's not a number. Um, okay, let's, let's finish this on the other side. Uh, what about when x is one-half? We would have one over one-half, which is, well, two. And when x is one-third, we would have one over one-third, which is three. And you can see what's happening here. It's going to, let me see if I can draw this. Okay, it's going to go up like that. All right. So here we have our function y equals 1 over x. Well, hold it. No, no, no. That's just half the function. What about when x is negative? When x is negative 1, it's going to go through negative 1, negative 1, because 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. 1 over negative 2 is negative 1 half. 1 over negative 3 is negative 1 third, and now you can see what's happening. We're just going to have uh, a very similar looking uh, shape on this side. It's basically the same shape as this, only it's been rotated around the origin. And what you end up with is this kind of cool looking graph here. Now, if you've studied conic functions, you might recognize this as a, uh, a hyperbola, and you would be right. This is a hyperbola. You've probably studied hyperbolas that had uh, uh, vertical or horizontal transverse axes. This one actually has a transverse axis that is 45 degrees. Um, uh, it's, it basically, it's the line y equals x. So it's right smack in between the two axes. That's kind of cool. Um, and there's something else that's kind of cool about this too. And that is... Uh, you can call this y equals 1 over x. You can multiply both sides of the equation and also call it x times y equals 1. Or you could even call it x equals 1 over y. These would all be perfectly valid descriptions of this graph. Uh, and if you notice that you, it's y equals 1 over x and it's also x equals 1 over y, 
what this means is if f of x is 1 over x, then f inverse of x is also 1 over x. It's its own inverse. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, it's its own inverse function. So that's interesting. And, uh, and remember, an inverse function, an inverse of a function is something that is uh, reflected over the line y equals x. And sure enough, if you draw the line y equals x here, you'll see, oh yeah, it's a very pretty symmetry around that line. Okay, cool. Good to know. Um, let's draw another graph. Let's draw a Let's make the graph of uh, y equals 6 over x, okay? Now, before I graph this, I should think to myself, okay, so 6 over x, that's kind of like saying 6 times 1 over x. So basically, I'm just taking my parent function and multiplying times 6. Hey, I know what that looks like. I remember doing my transformations where I had y equals a times f of b times x minus h plus k. Now, I remember what those things do. a uh, creates a vertical stretch or compression or a vertical reflection. b creates a horizontal stretch or compression or a, or a horizontal reflection. h shifts it left and right, and k shifts it up and down. So what's this 6 here? It's a. So this is going to create a vertical stretch of 6. Okay, cool. Well, this isn't going to be hard to do then. I'll just stretch up my parent function by 6. Okay, so I get... So this is going to be, uh, instead of going through the point 1, 1, it'll go through the point 1, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And instead of going through the point 2, 1 half, it'll be 2... And 6 times 1 half, which is, uh, well, 3. And then 3, and then 1 third gets multiplied by 6, so that's going to be uh, um, 2. And then, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Instead of going through the point 6, 1 sixth, it'll go through the point 6, 6 times 1 six, which is 1. And so we get these points here, the point 1 six, the point 2 3, the point 3, 2, and the point 6, 1. And again, think about it. If this is y equals 6 over x, you could also write this x times y equals 6. And sure enough, all these points on the graph, if you multiply the x-coordinate times the y-coordinate, you get 6. It's kind of an easy way to find points on the graph. So let's see. That means that also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, negative 6, negative 1 will be on the graph and negative 3, negative 2 will be in the graph, and negative 2, negative 3 will be in the graph, and negative 1, negative 6 will be in the graph. And so you're going to get this half of it, but you're also going to get this half of it right here. All right, that's what our function looks like. Okay, so it's, the, it's our original parent function that's been stretched up by 6. So this point here, the point 1, 1, got stretched up to uh, 1, 6. Now, you may look at this and say, well, yeah, it got vertically stretched, or maybe we'll say it didn't get vertically stretched, it got horizontally stretched. Well, you're perfect, perfectly right, okay? You can say that. Is, this is a, a, a horizontal stretch. We could describe this as being 1, 1 got stretched out to 6, 1, 1 half 2 got stretched out, stretched out to 3 2. 1 third 3 got stretched out to 2 3. In each case, you stretched it out horizontally by a factor of 6. Well, that means, going back to our, uh, uh, our, our, our transformations here, that means B would be 1 sixth. Huh. Okay. So I could describe this as Y equals 1 over 1 sixth X. Well, shoot, that's just 1 over x over 6, right? And 1 over a fraction is just the reciprocal of that fraction, so that's just 6 over x. And oh, Okay, we're back to where we started. Okay, so what we learned here is that a vertical stretch K 
can also be interpreted as a horizontal stretch, and a horizontal stretch could also be interpreted as a vertical stretch. So basically, what we're finding is we can sum up all of our stretches and reflections and compressions just with one parameter instead of two parameters. So instead of having both A and B, I'm just going to have A. All right, so that means that I can describe any uh, transformation of y equals 1 over x as y equals a times 1 over x minus h plus k. And I'm going to rewrite that as y equals a over x minus h plus k. All right, cool. Well, let's use what we learned here and let's, uh, let's graph this function here. The function y equals negative 2 over x minus 4 minus 3. All right. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my two uh, uh, asymptotes. Okay. Remember, uh, let's go back for a second to uh, our parent function. Uh, on our parent function, the uh, x and y axes are both asymptotes. I did not introduce that word yet, but I think you already know it. Okay. They are both the, they're both asymptotes. And that means that we never actually touch those axes, but we get infinitely close to the axes. Okay. So now over here, I also have asymptotes, but they're not necessarily the X and Y axis. As a matter of fact, they're definitely not the X and Y axis. Let me look at what I have here. I have a is negative two H is going to be 4, and k is going to be negative 3. Okay. So let me just, uh, uh, let me do the negative 2 first. The negative 2, so instead of going through the point 1, 1, it flips over and stretches by 2. So it's going to go through the point 1, negative 2. And instead of going through the point uh, uh, 2, 1 half, it's going to flip over and go, and then be stretched by 2. So it's going to go through the point 2, negative 1. And so this is going to look like this. And the other side, again, it's going to stretch. It's going to flip over the, uh, the x-axis and then stretch by 2. So it'll go through that point. And negative 2, 1 half is going to flip over the x-axis and it's get stretched by 2. So it goes through 1. And so this is going to look like this. Okay. Now let's do the translations. H equals 4 means the whole thing moved to the right by 4. So that means this asymptote here is actually the line x equals 4. And k equals negative 3 means that the whole thing shifted down by 3 units. So this asymptote is actually the point y equals negative 3. And this, uh, this point here that's not actually on the graph, it's just the, uh, the intersection of the asymptotes, is the point 4, negative 3. Okay? So this point here, the, uh, the intersection of the asymptotes, is always going to be the point h, k, because it's where, it's where the origin gets translated to. Okay, so that is very helpful, because that tells us, this, tells us that this asymptote is the line y equals whatever k is, and this asymptote is going to be the line y, y, or x equals whatever h is. All right. Well, that, uh, so that means that uh, if this is x equals 4, then 1, 2, 3, 4, that means my y-axis is actually over here. And if this is y equals negative 3, then 1, 2, 3, my x-axis is actually over here. Okay, this is x, and this is y. So that's what my graph looks like. Okay, there's one more thing about this graph that I want to tell you, and that is a, a, a weird kind of notation, okay? And, and it looks like this. I'm going to write limit as x goes to infinity, okay? The way you read this, that, that LIM means limit. The limit as x goes to infinity of this function f of x is negative 3. Now, what does that mean? It means as x goes to infinity, meaning as x goes way far out this way, okay, out towards positive infinity, that y gets closer and closer and closer and closer to a particular value. And that particular value is 
negative three. We, we already said that because that's because negative three is the asymptote, okay? This, what this says is, uh, no matter how arbitrarily close to negative three you want y to get, you can always find an x large enough that will get it within that, uh, within that interval, okay? Basically, as x heads to infinity, y heads to negative three. And also, the limit as x heads to negative infinity of f of x is negative three, meaning in this direction also, y gets closer and closer and closer to negative three. I want you to know this notation because it's gonna be super fundamentally important in calculus, these, uh, these limits. All right, let's do another one. Let's do the graph of y equals negative six over two x, two uh, x plus five. Is that plus five? That is plus five. Sorry, had to put my old man glasses on there to see. Negative six over two x plus five plus one. Okay, now you may be saying to yourself, "Hey, hold it! This is two x. We're not used to having a b there." It's okay. Don't worry about it. Just divide this fraction. Divide both numerator and denominator by two, and you're going to get negative 3 over x plus 2.5 plus 1. Oh, okay. Now it makes sense. So a is going to be negative 3, h is going to be negative 2.5, and k is going to be positive 1. All right, cool. I'm going to do it the same, the same way I did it last time. First, I'm going to uh, um, draw my asymptotes. And I'm putting this one between the lines because it's uh, x equals uh, negative 2.5. And I'll put this one right on a line because this is the line. Oh, oops, that was supposed to be dashed. Oops. That's why I use a pencil. Um, well, actually, shoot, it's just y equals 1, so let me just move it up one. This will be the x-axis, and my asymptote will be right here at y equals 1. Okay. And uh, if this is negative 2.5, then let's see. That means my x-axis is going to be right here. I'll go ahead and draw those in. But that, but this negative 3, I actually want to go from this point right here. So as x moves over by 1, y is going to go up 1, 2, 3. And as x moves over by 1, 2, 3, y is going to go up 1, like that. So it's going to go through those two points. And also as x goes over 1 to the left, y is going to... Whoop, 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 stop, stop negative three. Oh, my bad. Okay. Get rid of those points. Mistakes are fine as long as you learn from them. Okay. Uh, so I'm going over one and down one, two, three. That's what I wanted. And then I'm going over th one, two, three and down one like that. Okay. And then over on this side, I go over one, two, three and up one because it's negative 3, and over 1, and 1, 2, 3, like that. So those are my points that I'm going through. And it's going to look something like this. All right. That's my graph. And uh, I always like to just kind of to make myself feel a little better by looking at the points that it's going through. For example, this is going through the point uh, point five zero, and just just plug it in and make sure that it works. Okay, so if I plug in a point five here, I get two times point five, which is one, plus five is six. Negative six over six is negative one. Plus one is zero. Good, that works. And let me just arbitrarily choose another one. Let's choose this one here. So one, two, three, four, five and a half, negative 5.5 and two. Uh, so that means it's going through, so if I plug in a negative 5.5 into x, two times negative 5.5 
gets me uh, negative 11 plus 6 is negative 6. Negative 6 over negative 6 is 1, plus 1 is 2. Hey, cool. And let me just do this one also. This is 1, 2, 3 and a half. So negative 3.5 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. And so this is going to be, uh, if I plug in a negative 3.5, I get 2 times negative 3.5 is negative 7, plus 5 is negative 2. Negative 6 over negative 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4. 4. Excellent. Okay. So it's going through that point, through that point, through that point. I think I'm right. Okay. If I can make it go through three points, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about this. All right. Let's look at another one. And that is, oh, this time we don't have a function. We have a graph. And we're supposed to figure out what this function is. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess a good place to start would be the asymptotes, right? Okay. So it looks to me like one asymptote is doing this. Okay. So that's the line y equals negative 4. And another asymptote seems to be right here. And this is the line x equals 2. Okay, cool. Well, that tells us a lot right there. That tells us that uh, h equals 2 and k equals negative 4. And, uh, and then, so starting from this point here, as I move over 1, I'm going up 1, 2, 3. And as I move over 1, 2, 3, that means I'm going up 1. And I can already tell what this is because 1, 3, if I multiply 1 times 3, I get 3. And 3, 1, if I multiply that, I get... Uh, uh, I get uh, 3 as well. So that means a is 3. So this is the function y equals 3 over x minus 2 minus 4. Cool. And I also know that uh, the limit of this function, and I, let me just go ahead and write it f of x. Uh, f of x equals 3 over x minus 2 minus 4. And so the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is going to be negative 4. And also the limit as x goes to, in, to negative infinity of f of x is going to be negative 4. Hey, remember how at the very beginning of this video I said we're going to be looking at functions that are uh, ax plus b over cx plus d? Well, we haven't done that yet, have we? Let's change this function to ax plus b over cx plus d. Let's see how we can do it. We have 3 over x minus 2 minus 4. So let's, uh, to get this all in one fraction, I guess I should multiply the 4 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. And that tells me that now I have 3 over x minus 2 minus, let me distribute that 4 across the x minus 2, 4x minus 8 over x minus 2, common denominator. So now I have 3 minus 4x plus 8, be careful when you distribute that minus, over x minus 2. So that means that f of x can be described as negative 4x, and 3 plus 8 is plus 11 over x minus 2. Two. Voila. All right. Okay, one more. And this says graph and analyze. So analyze just means, you know, tell me everything you can about it. Y equals 10x minus 21 over 2x. Uh, that is 2x minus 3. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So this time... We have, we have it written in that form of ax plus b over cx plus d, and I want to write it in the form of something over x minus something plus something. Hmm. Okay. How am I going to do that? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by 2. I'm going to say this equals 5x minus 10.5 over 
x minus 1.5. So now I know something. I know that I have a minus 1.5, x minus 1.5 in the denominator. That tells me that h equals 1.5. That's good to know. Okay? And and I want to I want to use the limit to find k. Okay? Because I know that the limit as uh, as f of x goes to infinity of, um, th that the limit as, as x goes to infinity of f of x equals k. So let me just think for a second. Let me, let me look back at this original function. Let's say x is just huge, okay? x is like 10 million, okay? Well then, what would 10x minus 21 be? It would be 100 million minus 21. So 99,999,979. In other words, a number just ridiculously close to 100 million. And what would the denominator be? It would be 2x minus 3. So 2 times 10 million minus 3. So 19,999,997 would be in our denominator. In other words, a number just ridiculously close to 20 million. So we get a number very close to 100 million divided by a number very close to 20 million. And what is that? It's a number very close to 5. So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, y is going to be closer and closer to whatever this ratio is right here, 10 over 2. That's k. So k is going to equal 5. It's going to equal what y gets closer and closer to as x just explodes. Okay, well, that tells me a lot already because now I can start graphing this thing. Uh, so I'm going to go between the lines because my h is something 0.5. And uh, let me put this one right here. Okay, so this is the line y equals 5, and this is the line x equals 1.5, okay? Now, how do I figure out what my a is? Well, here's an idea. Take uh, the number 1 over from what your h is, so 2.5, and then... Plug it into your uh, equation. Find out what y is. Okay. Well, uh, 10 times 2.5 is 25. Minus 21 is 4. So 4 in the numerator. And 2 times 2.5 is, uh, is 5. Minus 3 is 2 in the denominator. So I get 4 over 2, which is 2. If, this, if y is 5 here, that means uh, y is 2 is going to be right down here because this is our x-axis. Oh, I should have used a straight edge. That doesn't look very good. Uh, let me go ahead and put my axes in. Okay. So there you go. The point two and a half, two is right there. And now I can look at this and say, okay, so I went over one and I went down one, two, three. That means A is going to be negative three. That's one way to do it using the graph. So now I know that this is going to be y equals negative 3 over x minus 1.5 plus 5. Okay? And if I want to get all whole numbers in my uh, uh, fraction there, I could call this negative 6 over 2x minus 3 plus 5. That also works. Um, so uh, what's another way of doing it? Well, here's another way of doing it. Uh, I know that h is 1.5 and k is 5, and, uh, and I know that it has to equal that fraction there. Actually, let's make it equal that fraction there. So, okay, well that means 5x minus 10.5 over x minus 1.5 equals a over x minus 1.5 plus 5, all right? I'm sticking in my h here and my k here. Okay, uh, 
let's uh, uh, let's get this all in one uh, fraction. So 5x minus 10.5 10.5 over x minus 1.5 equals a over x minus 1.5 plus 5 times x minus 1.5 over x minus 1.5. Now I have the same denominator all the way across. So in order for this to equal this, I just have to make my numerators equal each other. So 5 minus 10.5 equals a plus 5 times that. 5x minus 5 times 1.5 is 7.5. Uh, subtract 5x from both sides, and now the x's go away. Add 7.5 to both sides, and I get negative 3 equals a. Cool! That's another way of getting a equals negative 3. There is a third way to do this, and you're probably thinking, no, too many ways, except this way is actually the easiest way, and that is this. Take this fraction here. What we have is 10x minus 21 divided by 2x minus 3. Okay, well, let's just divide then. Let's divide 2x minus 3 into 10x minus 21. 2x goes into 10x five times. Five times 2x minus 3. I'm just doing regular old long division just like we learned in fourth grade. Five times 2x minus 3 is 10x minus 15. I'm going to subtract this minus this, so let me just change the signs and add. And so this cancels out, and it better. If it doesn't cancel out, you made a boo-boo, and you got to go back and choose a better number for this. Uh, negative 21 plus 15 is a negative 6. So that means I would get 5 plus negative 6 over 2x minus 3. And if you reorder 5 plus negative 6 over 2x minus 3, what you get is negative 6 over 2x minus 3 plus 5. So it's a, it's a really easy way uh, just, just divide this, and you will get your answer. Um, I, I remember that we never actually graphed this. Let's go ahead and graph it. So if a is negative 3, then I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, down 1. And this is going to look like this. And over here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, up 1. And over 1, 1, 2, 3. And it's going to go like this. There we go. So there is our our graph. It's going through these points. The uh, Let's see. This is the point uh, 2.5 Oop. Silly man. 2.52 It's going through the point uh, 4.54 it's going to the point negative 1.5 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it's going through the point 0.5 and 8. And uh, what's, the, what's the y intercept there? Well, the y intercept, if I just plug in 0, I'm going to get negative 21 over negative 3. Uh, well, shoot, that's just 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So actually your y-intercept is right there at the point zero seven. And uh, to find the x-intercept, oh, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, to find the x-intercept, that means 0 would equal this fraction. And if this fraction equals 0, then that means the numerator must be 0. So that means 10x uh, minus 21 would have to be 0. So 10x is 21, so x is 2.1. So here's our, eh, I'm kind of got it in the wrong place there. Here's our, uh, our x-intercept, the point 2.10. So I found my y-intercept, I found my x-intercept, I found four more points on the graph, I found my asymptotes. Uh, I guess the only thing left to say is that the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals 5, and the limit as uh, x goes to negative infinity of f of x is also 5. And that's about everything I can think of to say about this graph. All right.
Your brain is probably uh, uh, wanting a break right now, so I'm going to give you a break. Uh, that's about all I can say about rational functions. And uh, till the next video, bye-bye.